It's a swarf. Swarf and dip. This week's Swarf and Chips is coming to you from Ireland. I'm here with Dominic at Shannon Precision Engineering and we're going to take a tour of their facility. So, thank you for having us. Uh, thanks for coming over, lads. So, after you, where are we going? We're going up this way through the turning cell, yeah. Oh boy. So, um, I guess we are doing uh, quite a lot of automotive parts here in the turning cell. Quite a lot of, um, yeah, well we do quite a lot of castings and forgings actually here. So it's not just about um, castings and forgings for us here. We're trying to do an awful lot more of adding value with our customer. So we're trying to make sure that we get involved in the sub-assembly and the assembly. So a lot of bearing diameters get, uh, get, get turned in here as well. Uh, a lot of pulleys and uh, they will then go for their finishing and they'll get sub-assembled. So uh, a lot of parts under heavy, heavy regulation as well. You know, PPAP level five, uh, PPAP level three and yeah they require an awful lot of attention and, and, and measuring. Now I think one thing we need to point out is you do a lot of castings here. Yeah. So does that give does that bring its own problems just using castings? Yeah well it, 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 I guess it does it does for people that maybe don't do an awful lot of them but we do quite a lot and and what I guess is we really would promote within our customers that they get us involved during the design stage not because we know their product, but because we know machining and we know machining of casting. So there's elements that we can always bring when our customers get us involved at the design stage. So we promote that, we've had really good success with that. And uh, yeah, it's also led to, I, I guess, some additional business with, with sub-assemblies and things like that as well. Now, I think one thing we need to point out here is you'll see just how many doosins there are in this turning cell. And if Chris would like to dive into that machine, <laughs> They've also got steadies from SMW Autoblock. So, did you get the steadies when you bought the machine? Yeah, we did. Actually, the 3100 XLY that we have came with three steadies to do uh, to do very, very long tubular parts for aircraft interior. So uh, we have we would always have got uh, steadies with any of the larger single turret lays that we've got. Yeah. So we we've, we've quite a few steadies. Yeah. So as we're moving down, obviously, I just want to. Um, if Chris can catch up, pick up the pace. I just want to um, just so obviously this is how this part comes in as just a, a casting, and then and then this is how it's finished. So, what is the advantages of getting this in as a casting compared to doing it out of just a billet? Yeah, well, I suppose uh, it's the it's the cut down always is the cut down on uh, machining time. So. Obviously, with this one, there's probably less of an advantage, but there is still an advantage because you're not doing as much trepanning as you would have if it was a billet. And when you're doing that steel billet and trepanning it, you know, you're going to be burning up inserts, especially yeah. in the machine in the face. And I think, I think with the amount you've got here, if you're trying to take out all that material, yeah. your inserts aren't going to last yeah, two minutes. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. And, and, it's, it, and it's cycle time. It gets down to, you know, it goes down to minutes as well, you know, so. So, but all you've got to do is look round and I have to say, everywhere you look, parts just look amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah, th th these will be parts that are uh, going into, we actually supply these in kits. So again, very, very tight uh, bearing tolerance in that. Um, we actually end up sub-assembling that, putting in the bearing, sir clip, dust shield, uh, and supplying them in kits, actually, in custom-made stillages for our customer. So they call off a kit, they all call off, let's say, 40 of each item, and it goes up to them. If we get a call off today at half three, they'll have a dolly in the morning at nine o'clock in our slot. You can't argue with that, can you? Yeah, Th so. That sort of turnaround, I don't think there's many places where you get that sort of efficiency. So where are we actually heading to next? Because that was obviously the, that, that should have turned people's heads. <laughs> wow, <laughs> really bad. bad pun there. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it would. But I'd say we kind of when we moved here in 2014, um, I guess we started growing maybe 20% year on year. We started off with 30 odd people and uh, a lot less machine tools. And uh, I suppose what was becoming apparent is that we needed more space. So we ended up um, 
buying a couple of sites beside us. And what we're walking into now is, I guess, what we've uh, called our aerospace cell. And uh, this is the building that we built just in time for COVID. But, uh, <laughs> but, but uh, it was nothing to do with that, obviously. But yeah, so we, it, we ended up just um, building it at that time. Only had a couple of machines in here, but what we're seeing now is that uh, the demand is coming back quite strong and we're starting to be able to reinvest in in, in, our, in our machine tools again to try and fill out the floor space that we've given ourselves, you know. So behind, if Chris can just turn around, that you have your inspection area, which we can't actually go into because it's full of NDAs in there. So yeah. we'll, we'll stay out of there. We don't want to get you yeah, in trouble. Look, do not go in there. So, All we have is we have three CMMs in there, loads of certified gauges, some, uh, you know, really good engineers in there as well. and. Uh, yeah, we've got a good, good team inside there, yeah. And then this is your newest Matsura. This is our, our, our latest toy, yeah, absolutely. Which so it, obviously it's not turned on because it's, it's waiting for fixtures, I'm guessing. Yeah, it, it, we're actually just today, because it only got signed up yesterday, there was a FANUC upgrade. So uh, first job is going in there is fixtures that we're making for, for uh, long running product that we have. So it's going to be going up it's very, great very that, soon. I think it's great that you're constantly investing so, and talking about investing, we're actually going to finish between two of your machines from ETG, which yeah. is your, your first two Nakamuras. So, yes. what, how did you come to the decision to change? Because obviously we've seen you've got so many Doosans. Yeah. So what, what was the decision to change from Doosan to Nakamura? Uh, well, it started off with the WT, and I guess the WT was... Uh, project dependent really we felt like we were getting um, okay we, we like the engineering and the application support uh, they were quite aggressive in their times and what they felt they could achieve for us we liked what they were talking about when it came to the support uh, like I was mentioning earlier so it and and we really really we just kind of like the product because it's a robust machine it's compact you can see why there's not a lot of vibration. Like I was mentioning earlier, each turret has its own axis, so you kind of you're free to do heavy cutting on one side and light cutting on the other, or you know surface finish type cutting on the other. So I guess there was all those things adding up together, and then Jamie, being a good salesman, came in and started saying, "Let me see something else." And in fairness to him and the team, they got us a really good result with uh, the SC, which I believe was the first in the UK and Ireland, I think, Yeah, I think it was, it was what, it was, it was the first one anywhere, I think. I think you've yeah. actually got the first one, so, and I think what's interesting about this machine is why you actually got this machine, because this part, wherever Chris is going, this part I've got in my hand. Now, let me just uh, work the camera. So, you used to make this part on three different machines, yeah. but that's not the case anymore. No, it, it all comes off in one hit here with, our, with the SC100. Um, I guess the challenge we always had uh, was trying to get in past the, the spindle and trying to get in there with long series cutters. It was always, we were always getting too much vibration. Um, and we, it was the deal that we did at the time as well where we were able to get two, um, just two single turret lathes to, to do the two separate operations, have one operator in there was the logic at the time. But uh, when Jamie came in and we started talking about uh, the possibilities within the SC100, I, was, I wasn't 100% sure if we'd be able to do the milling operation was my, was my big, uh, uh, I, I suppose, reservation at the time that they'd be able to do it. Yeah, because if I can just quickly jump in. Yeah. If, <laughs> and this is brilliant, if, um, there will be a video coming out soon with me and Jamie from ETG where he actually used some Japanese origami on a piece of paper which oh, I thought we had to hand but we haven't where he ripped up some paper to figure out whether this was possible or not and I think that just speaks to the engineer in him that yeah. a piece of paper and then and, and what, what, what's great and I don't know if he'll like me telling you this but Nakamura actually said it couldn't be done, and Jamie went, nah, I'm an engineer. Yeah. A bit of paper, and he's done it. Oh. This is oh, what he does! This is what he flipping God. does! It's illegal! Alien! We have it, we have it, and we have it running for the last six months, so yeah, 
the proof of the pudding is there. <laughs> yeah, so fair play to them. And it, honestly, engineers can do anything when they put their mind to it. Yeah. It might be over-engineered sometimes, but in this case, it was brilliant. So I think, well, I just want to say a big thank you for your time That's and no for, for showing us around your shop. Yeah. And um, so that will conclude another week's Wharf and Chips. If, if you really like these, then comment down below what you'd like to see, and we'll see you next week. Well, I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I actually, actually filmed that.